Uh, we're doing volume of pyramids and cones. I did a demonstration mm -hmm. on the ratio between um, a cone and a cylinder and a pyramid and a cylinder with the same base and height. The relationship is that a pyramid is one third the volume of the prism with the same base area and height. So we're going to did volume is area of the base, 12 times 8, times the height, 10, divided by 3, which was 320 cubic feet for the first figure. Okay, for number 2, we have a little issue. We do. Uh, 5 is not... Not the height. where the um, height is is actually on the outside of the figure it's not on the inside it's outside here you see how I have it drawn on this pyramid that I'm showing to the class it's on the exterior it's on the outside plastic of this thing we need this height on the interior okay so we have to find this length right here that's the height how far do you think it is from here to here? If it's six going this way, this is in the center, so this would be three. Okay, so we're gonna need to do the Pythagorean theorem to start, do the problem. We are, this is three, we need the height, and that part I highlighted in red is on the outside of the pyramid, that's where the five is. So to do that, we're going to do 8 squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared, 5 being the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So we're going to finish up our Pythagorean theorem by squaring those numbers, subtracting 9 from both sides, get 16, take the square root of 16, we've been doing Pythagorean theorem all year. We get 4 for the height. Alright, now we're ready to do the volume of this pyramid. Its base is a rectangle that is 6 by 8. And that is where that 8 is. So, okay, 6 times 8 is the area of its base. And you don't have to put it in parentheses. I'm doing that just because I'm reminding you that's the base area. Times the height, which we found to be 4. And then divide by 3. That's 72. I think I might have done it wrong. Wait, hold on. Six times eight. I was trying to do it in my head really quick, and I times the height we found was four divided by three. Sixty-four. Okay. Don't know where I got that from. Sixty-four cubic yards. What's the matter? Six times eight, area of the base, times the height of four, divided by three. Now, number three is all set to go because the height is on the interior and it's just an oblique pyramid. Doesn't matter that it's tilted a little. Still do the problem the same way. 15 five times 15, that's your area of your base, times your height of 16, and divide by three. If it, okay. It doesn't have to be in the center if it's oblique, as long as it's going down to the base, perpendicular to the base. Wherever the tallness is, that would be from the peak, straight down to the base at a right angle. Then you know you have the height. All right, 15 times 15 times 16. Divided by 3. All right, 1,200. You're right, cubic inches. Cones now, only needed to do a few examples, I think, to get that job done. You take pi times r squared times the height, that's the area of the um, base, times the height divided by 3. The base area is actually the pi r squared part. So we're doing a cylinder, pi r squared times the height, and then dividing by 3. So let's just do a cone. 
This one has a radius of six, and that, uh-oh, is on the outside of the cone. So where they have that pen drawn is out there. The 10 is out on the outside. We need this. Okay, again, do you understand what I'm saying? The plastic, this is where the 10 is. It's out there, it's a slant height. The tallness is inside the pyramid. So we're gonna need on this one to find the height in here. And the radius is six. Okay, so we're ready to do the Pythagorean theorem on this thing to find that height. This is 10, this is six, we need to find h. h squared plus six squared equals 10 squared. Some of you may already know the three, four, five family of Pythagorean triples. This is just a six, eight, 10. Because when you subtract 36 from 100, you get 64. You take the square root of 64 and you get height to be 8. Okay, so for the cone, again, volume is pi r squared times the height divided by 3. So pi times 6 squared times our height we found to be 8 and then divide by 3. Three hundred and one point six if we go to the tenth cubic centimeters. Okay, the next one's ready for us to go because the height is given to be ten and the radius is eight. So the volume is pi times eight squared times 10 divided by three. That's 670.2 cubic feet. All right, then we have number 12 and, I mean, six and, I saw 12. Six and seven have diameters provided, so the radius is half the diameter. So we have a radius of six on number six. It's just pi times six squared times the height of 30. That 30 is definitely for the height. It's not showing it slanted, it's showing it at a straight right angle to the base. So our volume, pi times 6 squared times 30 divided by 3. So what would we round that to if we had to go to the tenth, nearest tenth? That's going to go up to zero, and this is going to go up to one. So it would be 1,131.0. Oh. Cubic inches. Okay, the radius of this one, oops, I don't know what, maybe right of six because of the last problem. That's half of 20, which would be 10. Both of these have a radius, both sides are obviously 10. They're both radii. I cut the 20 in half, but I don't know the height. So we've got a right triangle that has one leg is 20. We don't know the other leg, that's our height. And this hypotenuse is 26. So h squared plus 20 squared equals 26 squared. 
I wrote 20 on there. What was I supposed to write? I swear I've been thinking about something else and I should keep my mind on what I'm doing here. What did I do wrong? Should be a 10. I realized it. I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh. This should not be so big. Okay. 26 squared is 676. Um, 10 squared is 100. I'll replace that here. We subtract 100 from both sides. We get h squared is 576, which is a perfect square. 576 square root of that is 24. Bless you. All right, volume. Pi times 10 squared times the height we just found is 24. Bless you. Divided by 3. Two thousand five hundred and thirteen point three cubic feet. Work next. Assignment next. Yes, practice is next. I'm going to show you. Let's just quick glance through these and see which ones you have to do the Pythagorean theorem on. I see number one, that the tallness is given. Number two, it's given. Number three, nope, yep, that's on the exterior. So number three, please just make some notes with me because I'm gonna move on after this to the other worksheet, which was on spheres. You're gonna have to do, how far is it going inward towards the center. Yes, half of eight. Okay, so you're going to be finding the height on number three. Okay, so I'm just going to glance through the practice problems you have and look for any that you need to find the height. Okay, can we spot the rest now? Four looks good. Five. This is on the outside of the cone. You're going to need to do half of 14 is 7, and you're going to have to find the height with your Pythagorean theorem. Oh, and then there's number 6. So all I'm doing, guys, again, is giving you some hints. What do we need to find on number 6? Please look at number six. Okay, you too. Guys, number six. Thanks, Amato. You're gonna have to find the radius. You have a 66 degree angle there. That's not special right triangles, that's trig. You're gonna have to use trig. So if you remember back when we did trig, cause your final is coming up and you need to know your trig properties, from that angle, the radius right here would be adjacent. The side opposite would be here, and it's got a 10 on it. What do you use for opposite and adjacent? No, you should. Okay, let's think of the mnemonic I gave you. The sine of an angle is the first one on your calculator. I said Oscar has. A cosine of an angle is a heap. Oscar has a heap, or some of you have done so, <clears throat> toa. Tangent of an angle is Oscar has a heap of apples. That's the one we're using because we have the opposite side to the angle that's given, and we need the adjacent side. So first we need to do the tangent of 66 equals opposite 18 over adjacent the radius. When we treat that like a proportion, 
you do r times the tangent of 66, cross products are equal, or some of you, 1 times 18, divide by the tangent of 66. You have to take 18 and divide it by the tangent of 66. Let's find that height, I mean that radius. We type 18. Now, your calculator could be in the wrong mode. If you're not getting 8.01 in your calculator, it's in the wrong mode. You really should be checking. Is anybody not getting 8.01? Remember when you go to the mode button, it has to be in degrees. Okay, so 8 point, uh, the radius is 8. Let's just write 8 because we'll go to the nearest tenth. And now let's plug it into the volume. All right, so the volume is pi times 8 squared times the height 18 divided by 3. Okay. You okay? All right. Twelve thousand one thousand two hundred and six point four. And that would be in cubic millimeters. I don't know why I finished that one for you, but I did. All right, so the rest are ready to go. You don't even have that. You don't have these, do you? Did you just stop at number uh, eight? Okay. So there's not a lot for you to do on that. I would like you to grab your, um, before you, when we're getting ready to look at the spheres page, I would like you to think about this problem right here. What would you get if you spun this around? What shape? If it came spinning around, yep, it would be a cylinder. It would have a radius of three and a height of seven. And then you can find its volume. What would it be if you spun a triangle around? Cone. That's going to be a cone. Now look, what if you spun half a circle around? Yep, that would be a sphere. Okay. That's a problem. It's about all I can really think of to do, um, unless I did something fancy, like a rectangle and a triangle. Well, it would have circles, though. These would be, it would be a cone thing. <laughs> it would be like a cone and a cylinder, you know. I didn't draw it very well. It's a cone and a cylinder. <laughs> All right, I drew a mess. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so now, first, I did take out the surface area. I only chose to do the volume because that's what's on your final, and we're running out of days. The volume of a sphere, well, think about a sphere. A sphere is just like a ball. Half of it's called a hemisphere. And going around the center circle, the biggest circle, is called the great circle. Because you can go around it in other places and it still be a circle. Cross sections would be a circle. But the great circle is the largest one. It goes through sort of like the diameter of the circle in a sense. You just need to know its radius to be able to find its volume. So we're going to be doing volume is 4 pi times the radius cubed divided by 3. You will have this formula on your formula sheet for finals. You're just going to have to know how to plug in the radius properly and do the calculation. Okay. So let's do some examples. That's basically all you can do with these. There's nothing fancy to show you. 
This first one, we have a radius of 5 on our sphere. So we do the formula. It says in it 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. So we just do type 4 pi times 5 cubed divided by 3. And I want to remind you how to cube something on your calculator. So it goes 4 pi times 5. And then you're going to have to use the arrow up key, which is under clear. And then put in 3. If you have a new, newer operating system, not, the ones in my case, most of them, I believe, do, don't do this, where you have to arrow out. The ones in my case, I think you're seeing like an arrow right now, right? And then you're putting a 3 in that box, in that blank. Okay, 4 pi r cubed, then we have to divide by 3. All right, so if you type that in, which I hope you did to practice and find out if you're going to do it correctly, you should be getting 523.6. Okay, number two. This one has a radius of 16, but it's only how much of a sphere? It's a half a sphere. So this is a hemisphere. A hemisphere, we're just going to do the same formula, and then we're going to divide by 2 at the end. 4 pi times 16 cubed. This is going to be pretty big. Divided by 3, and then we're going to divide that by 2 because it's only a hemisphere. Sixteen to the third is going to be pretty big. Well, it just goes off, and now it comes back on. Our error is going on and off. Four pi times sixteen cubed divided by three, and then that would be if the whole thing was there, but it's only half of one. So I'm going to divide that by two. Eight thousand five hundred seventy-eight point six. Okay, so I'm glad, you know, I'm glad to hear that you're saying you got it wrong because I want you to practice typing it in. If you didn't practice typing it in, you don't even know if you're going to type it in wrong on the final. Why miss a question like this is just a formula, right? Just plug in a formula. All right. Three. Uh, I believe they're telling us that 7 inches is just the radius because of how it's way over there and not in the middle. Okay. So find the volume of the spheres, hemisphere. This is going to be, wait. Yeah, that's my last example. Okay. 4 times pi times 7 to the third divided by 3. Uh oh. I didn't mean to. Have you? I've done it a couple just because these it's very small on my screen. I'll just change it to a pie. Okay, fourteen thirty six point eight. Okay, cubic inches in a hemisphere hemisphere is only half a sphere so it's going to be 4 pi times 5 to the third divided by 3 and then divide that by 2 calculate it please you already did it Is that radius 5? And then you got 523 points. You have to divide that by 2, though, because it's only half of a sphere. 261.8 cubic inches.
Um, let's look at the oranges together. I want you to help me think about this. Mandy cuts the spherical orange in half along a great circle. So basically, you would think of an orange as a sphere. It says that she cut it along the great circle, which is the middle. What shape would you get? Hmm? The great circle would be a circle. If the radius of the orange is two inches, so that would be two, what is the area of the cross section that Mandy cut? This would be the cross section right here. So it would be pi times the radius squared, because the area of a circle is just pi r squared. So pi times 2 squared give me the area of the cross section, 12.6. Yes, Cheyenne? Okay. Square inches, because it's the area of the circle. All right, this says what's the volume of this half of the orange. So we're going to do volume now of half of an orange would be a hemisphere. So it's going to be 4 pi times 2 to the third. And then divide by 3. But what do we got to do to that? Because that's the volume of the whole orange. Yeah, divide that by 2. Okay, so there's your orange as if before you divide, cut it in half. Now divide it by 2, be 16.8 cubic inches of orange. Pretty, pretty good size orange. Okay, now in your smart, I thought maybe we, I mean, you're, um, not your smart, in your uh ISN, I'm pulling up the notebook for that. If you'd like to fill in some things in there, I'll tell you what we need and what we don't. And then you just have a small amount of homework to finish those two things. Practice. Nope, not yet. Plus, getting kind of close to the end of class. Someone went. All right, this, all right, you guys getting that page now? Oops. Just the note of the volume of the pyramid is one third the volume of the prism with the same area of base and height. And your big ISM packet is <laughs> so stuck there. <laughs> okay, so find the volume of the pyramid. This would have a base area of 8 times 8, and its height would be 10. Okay, so the volume would be 8 times 8 times 10 divided by 3. So it's 213 and a third. Oh, I don't know why I put a dot on that. <laughs> like I was making an eye. 213 and a third, or 0.3 repeating cubic feet. This is an old one I did. I'm just erasing it. Um, I am going to remove some on here because it's not on the final. I'm going to take out number three because I'm not going to have you test it on that. All you would do is do the area of the base, which is a regular polygon, then multiply by 11 and divide by 3. 
so you can cross that one out. I'm not going to be making you do those at this time because we're short for time this semester. You will be tested on something more like this, which is going to be a volume of base is 15 times 15 times the height of 16 divided by 3. I took out all the unusual pyramids. We could do this triangular pyramid, though, because its base is a right triangle. Then the area of that base would be 6 times 8 divided by 2. We already had done this problem earlier. So did anybody go ahead and calculate that? Wanted to tell me what it was? What was that? The 1,200 cubic inches? Yeah, we had that one on our worksheet. This one has a triangular base, so it would be 6 times 8 divided by 2 for the base area. Then you would multiply by the height of 7 and divide that by 3. So this is the base area. It would be 6 times 8 divided by 2, and then that is 40 at uh, 24. But I just plugged it all in here. I'm going to type 24 times 7 divided by 3. And there, why did I... Um, to, I'll go back to it, that's 56. Why did I do 6 times 8 divided by 2? How come I did 6 times 8 divided by 2, guys? What is the base shape? A triangle. Triangles, base times height divided by 2. For its area. That's why I did that. Okay. Um, cones, we'll just do a little from here. You've got pi, we'll do the pi r squared times the height divided by 3 for your cone. This one's volume would be pi times 5 squared times 12 divided by 3. That was 314.2 cubic inches. You will see these formulas, of course, on your final exam sheet, either one. Okay, and there's two more examples in our ISN we could quick do. This one you have to do the Pythagorean theorem. I think that one was actually in our worksheet today. This comes out to be 24 because 8 squared plus 10 squared equals 26 squared. And I'm just showing how you got that 24 was by Pythagorean theorem. And then the volume, we do pi times 10 squared times the height of 24 divided by 3. Okay. You need these in your ISN? I hope you did it now because I'm not doing it again. Radius was 10. What was the height? I forgot. Thank you, Sabrina. 24. Yep. Divided by 3. Big one. 2513.3 cubic feet. And then this is just an oblique cone. Don't worry about that. You still do it exactly the same. It's showing the height to be 12. 
pi times 6 squared times 12 divided by 3. Okay, 452.4. cubic centimeters. And again, that's just good for your study guide to have those ISNs. You won't be using that whole thing on the final. You will only be able to use your formula sheet. Oh, is that next on the ISN? Okay, we'll talk about rotating solids a bunch tomorrow.